Using backing tracks on Sage doesn't mean you have to give up freedom and flexibility. And introducing freedom and flexibility into your track setup doesn't mean you have to introduce complexity. In this tutorial, I wanna show you how to set up and use your MIDI controller with Ableton Live so that you can have freedom and flexibility while running backing tracks on stage. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel here on the YouTube channel every single day, 10 a.m. Central. I post a brand new tutorial showing you how to run tracks like a pro with Ableton Live. If that's something you're interested in, then consider subscribing and enabling the bell icon. So I've got my Ableton Live set here, open up with tracks. I've pre-formatted everything. If you wanna format your tracks in a way that looks like this, that's simple, easy to understand, stable and efficient, then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash template to pick up my template. Now I've got my track set up. I have my MIDI controller connected to my computer via USB. If you're using a five pin MIDI controller, this is what I would suggest, a Mio XC. You could connect five pin to your controller and then you could connect the other end to your computer. And what's really nice about this, uh, I'll include a link in the description in this video. What's really nice about this is I have USB-C on one side and then I could take this adapter off uh, or add it back on if I wanted USB-A. So regardless, connect your controller to your computer. Again, in my case, I'm using the Oakboard uh, Slide Duo. Uh, I've got the link to the description. It's connected via USB. Let's head back into Ableton and let's set up our MIDI preferences for this. So I'm gonna go Command comma to go to Live's Preferences, Control comma if you're on a PC. And I wanna go to the Link Tempo MIDI tab. Now, once I'm here, you wanna look for your MIDI controller and we're really just gonna deal with the input side of this. So I found mine here, Oakboard Slide Duo, and I want to enable remote. Now, by enabling remote, that essentially means I can remotely control live from my MIDI controller. So uh, our MIDI controller is set up. I'm gonna close preferences and preferences live. Now let's add something that's, that's gonna unlock all this freedom and flexibility in live force, and that's called locators. So let's go back into live, and I'm gonna add locators for just a few of my songs here. So. I've got uh, this first song here. I'm gonna put my mouse right above uh, this click track where we see the speaker icon. I'm gonna right click and do add locator. And we're just gonna add uh, this title in. So a better word, that's our first song. We'll scroll to this song, do the same thing, add locator, okay. Uh, and as I'm adding these locators, again, it's just worth mentioning, all I'm doing is just going right above each one of these sections, right clicking and clicking add locator. Now, I would definitely suggest uh, doing this for every single one of your songs in your set. For the uh, sake of time, I'm just gonna do three of these really quickly, okay? Now, when I'm using my MIDI controller, I could 100% uh, assign each one of my songs to like a button on my MIDI controller, but let's look at my MIDI controller for a second. I, I've got three songs set up. I only have a few buttons on this. And that may feel like a limitation. I think it's actually the perfect MIDI controller for running tracks because of the lack of buttons, because I wanna show you how to really easily navigate these songs using Ableton Live. So let's go back into Live. Uh, I'm gonna go to MIDI Map or MIDI Assign mode and I can click this mini button up here to do this and there's four buttons four controls I want to look at play stop previous locator and next locator now you can see that I've already mapped uh, some of these controls on here uh, so I'm going to delete them and then we're going to go ahead and remap these to our MIDI control and you'll see how easy it is to map in Ableton Live it's really simple so let's click play here uh, and then let's click play on our MIDI controller uh, I'm going to click stop in Ableton Live and I'm going to press stop on my MIDI controller let's have you hang out over in, in Ableton now uh, I'm going to click previous locator and we'll click previous on our controller and next and click next now let's take a look at how easy it is to navigate our set just by using play stop previous and next so back in live let's exit key assign mode or midi assign mode uh, i'm going to double press stop on my controller so i'll show you what that looks like so when i do that that takes me back to my first song and then let's press play on our midi controller okay so that's going to start us playing at the very beginning of our song let's stop so we'll press stop on our controller here uh, and you can see we stopped over in ableton live now let's jump to uh let's let's jump to song three so let me show you how I can jump to song three from my MIDI controller. So let's go back to our controller, let's hit next. You can see when I do that, that takes me to song two. I'll hit next one more time. And when I do that, that's gonna take me to song three. And then again, I could press play, right? And it's gonna play. Or I could go here, press stop to stop that, uh, which is great. So I can really easily navigate my Ableton live set and select multiple songs from my MIDI controller. And I really like that because it allows me to stay focused on the music, stay in, in the moment. 
as opposed to staring at a computer screen. So I can navigate my set really easily. But what if we wanna actually repeat sections and parts of our songs? I'm gonna show you how to do that next. But before I do, I wanna remind you, if you wanna be able to format your songs like this and use Ableton Live in a way that's really simple and easy, then head to fromstudiostage.com slash template to download my free tracks template. Okay, back to Ableton Live. Let's do this with our first song. You know, we don't have tons of time in this tutorial, so I'm just gonna focus on doing this with uh, my first song here. So what I'm gonna do is click on this markers track here, and I've created a markers track to represent sections of my song. Uh, again, head to fromcdsage.com slash template to figure out how to do this all yourself. And what I'm gonna do is click on this, and I'm gonna click this set button up here to add these, okay? Now to speed this up, this is a little outside of the scope of this video. Uh, I'm gonna go up here, Command K, and I've assigned this to A for add. So watch how easy it is for me just to navigate my set. I'm gonna click on these and press A on my keyboard. Uh, I could also um, uh, do this to where uh, I could set this up and have Ableton automatically add locators for me if I wanted to. Again, all outside of the scope of this tutorial. But I'm gonna go through and um, add these guys in. Okay, and we're at the end here. So let me take you back into live. You can see, actually let's get our ending. Um, every one of our song sections has a locator. Now I haven't named those, because I have labeled these with my markers track so that I know each section. So let's navigate this song using our MIDI control. I'm gonna double press stop to get back to the beginning. Uh, I'm gonna press play to start us at the beginning here, okay? And we're gonna hang out in the intro just for a second. Uh, typically, a lot of times when people are using tracks, uh, maybe in an intro, someone misses it, the artist wants to talk a little more, um, you wanna extend that section. Here's what I would do. Uh, we're in the intro, I'm gonna wait till the last measure and I'm gonna press previous, okay? And by doing that, it's gonna jump me back to the locator at the start of that section, which is great. Now this is nice, but let's uh, jump even further in our song. So we're gonna wait till the last measure, and then I'm gonna press next, okay? And let's get to, let's jump all the way to verse two, right? So uh, I could jump to verse two there, verse two is gonna play, and I'll press stop for the sake of this. Now, what's really nice about this approach, again, I'm navigating simply by play, stop, previous, and next, which is great. Uh, I can jump around my songs in my set this way. If I'm in a song section um, and I want to repeat it, I'm not thinking about what is that song section. There's one decision I make. Do I want to repeat? If so, press previous. Do I want to skip that section, go to the next one? If so, I press next. Or do I want to skip a few different sections? If so, then I'm going to press next a few times, which is great. Now, the reason I'm waiting till the last measure here is because global quantization is set to one bar. I highly suggest keeping that set to one bar. That just means in the last bar of your song section, uh, that's where you can uh, decide, do I want to repeat? Do I want to just let it run as is? Or do I want to press next? So what I love about this approach is I have freedom and flexibility to jump around and I'm doing that with four buttons play stop previous and next but it's really simple I don't have to take all this content chop it up put it into scenes create follow actions just to get it to play linearly it's gonna play linearly but then when I want to intervene to repeat or have freedom and flexibility, then I can do that again simply by pushing previous or next on my MIDI controller. Now, if you want to learn more about running tracks in a way like this that's efficient, stable, flexible, then make sure to subscribe and enable the bell icon so you see exactly when I go live. And just to make it a little easier to find content, I've linked in the description of this to all of my content focused on tracks. So you could take a weekend and completely binge on learning how to use Ableton Live in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.